You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates, and grow your profits. Hello and welcome. If you're looking to improve the performance and return on investment of your marketing, then you've tuned in to the correct podcast. I'm Chloe Thomas, the host of this Marketing Focus show, and it's very cool to have you tuning in to our highly eclectic month about what's new in e-commerce that could help you grow your sales. Normally, we focus each month on one topic. So we do email, we do SEO, we do Facebook ads, and we get different experts in on that topic to explore it from different angles for you. This month, we are going totally eclectic. We are covering a very different topic each week. So far, we've looked into TikTok and one-click checkouts. And in this episode, we are taking inspiration from a huge trend in Asia that's a little like creating an online pop-up store, but on your own website. We are talking about live stream e-commerce. We're going to be getting into the different ways you can do this, the different types of setup, what makes for a good uh, live stream event, how to promote it. We're going to talk about all of that and what it could do for you uh, very, very shortly. A couple of things to tell you before we get into it. One is that this is properly, properly new. I'm guessing the majority of you will not have heard of this, which is very different from everything else we're covering this month. So we say because it's so new, there is not much extra information out there and not much tech you can use to do it. So we will be mentioning Kurkuma a few times, which is my guest's tech platform, because they're pretty much the only people out there offering the functionality, especially to smaller businesses. And the other thing you need to know is that this is hugely powerful. The numbers coming out of Asia are insane. There's millions and millions and millions and millions of yen being spent via this method in China. And my guest has recently published a case study with a rock band of all things uh, in Prague who spent 10 minutes setting up their first live stream e-commerce, ran a 90 minute event during on their e-commerce merchandise website, during which 90 minutes they sold the equivalent of 62% of their usual monthly sales. So for essentially 100 minutes work, they did almost three weeks worth of sales. So it's got to be worth a look, hasn't it? Um, So much opportunity in this marketing slash sales method for you. We're going to get into it all with our brilliant guest in a second or two. But before we do, please do check out the sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Klaviyo, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform for brands of all kinds and sizes. Whether you're an entrepreneur just starting out or you're part of a marketing team at a multinational brand, Klaviyo will give you everything you need to create memorable marketing moments, building customer relationships that keep shoppers coming back time and time again. Get started with a free account today. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Masterplan. Today I'm chatting with Livestream e-commerce expert Robert Tarabchak. Robert is the founder of Livestream Commerce platform Korkuma and is a Forbes 30 under 30 to watch this year. For the last seven years, he's been fascinated with how humans and technology interact with each other, looking for those innovative ways to make the experience better, both for the user and for the company behind the tech. Hello, Robert. Hi, Chloe. Thanks for having me. Uh, It's great to have you here, especially because we are talking about such an exciting area of e-commerce. And I find often the the really exciting high sales generating areas of e-commerce are ones which it costs an awful lot of money to implement. But this is one which anyone can do which is hugely powerful for driving sales, not just noise. So um, so it's great to have you here. Thank you. Now, how did you get into live stream e-commerce? Because I'm betting that the majority of our listeners have no idea what it is. So how, how did you end up creating a platform for it? It's a great question. So um, I've been trying to be an entrepreneur for many years and I'm a tech guy. I never had experience with marketing or sales before. And four years ago, we started developing a video streaming platform for end customers directly competing with YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. And when COVID hit last well, last year, we seen multiple businesses struggling while 
trying to market and sell their products online, especially those that are coming from retail to online. And But even those in online had very tough time because there are new customers coming in that, that would usually not go to, to those websites because they were used to buy o- offline. So, and we also have seen many investors looking at this area and we've seen the huge trend coming in from, from Asia um, that went from zero to $180 billion ref share in just four years in Asia. And, and we've seen a couple of companies experimenting with this. So with the knowledge we had, with, with the intellectual property and technology we have, we've decided that we could bring to the market our own unique solution for much lower price that is so affordable for even tiny businesses just starting up or mid-sized businesses. And yeah, that's that's how our journey started. And from that point, I, I learned a lot about all kinds of marketing methods and and ways uh, how how people can optimize their their marketing and sales. Excellent, because I think I, what I like about how you've you've ended up in this world is it's it's like the stars have aligned. You know, the investors are interested. There's huge. There's a proving case study in another part of the world. There's opportunity for pretty much any e-commerce business to start doing this. So there's huge potential customer demand. And often, when the stars align like that, it's a it's a marketing method or a sales method, which retailers really need to pay attention to because there is huge potential. So for those who are still going, what on earth are they talking about? What is live stream e-commerce? <laughs> Can you explain it in simple terms? What, what is a live stream e-commerce event? So in a nutshell, it's a way you can present your product or tell a story or educate your customers about um, any specifics around your product by going live on the website or in the mobile app so your customers can engage with you in different way they can see products their colors their shape their uh, fabric and they can see you standing behind your business and you can build amazing relationship with your customers and we now uh, split live commerce into three categories there is one-to-one conversation very similar to live text chat that's been deployed to many e-commerce sites for for ages now with chatbots and stuff like that so whenever there is demand uh, for for specific products from customers and they, they need to be educated they usually go and use these chats but with live commerce introduced, they now can have one-to-one conversation, uh, like a video call with a retail trader showing the, the exact product. And then there is second type that's one too many when the business decides that we have a full stock of um, specific item and we want to sell it out. So in that case, they need to go live and sell to many customers at once and that's what we do at Corcuma. Uh, we specialize at optimizing your your marketing and sales so you don't have to allocate one resource for one call but you can prepare a marketing campaign for one event and direct people to to be there on specific product page where you are going to air live or you can be pre-recorded as well and the third one that we are exploring and it's super hard to to accomplish with the technologies we have uh, these days and it's few too many. We've seen few too many on Clubhouse when there are multiple people interacting at the same time with each other and it's happening in real time and then they broadcast it to many others. And at that point you can have some latencies and it's all fine. And we are now thinking about ways how we could do live podcast or or interview close to grow globe with say five marketing experts and talk about live commerce and uh, our customers could interact with with us and ask us questions so few to many is something that we haven't seen so far and it's because there are so many technological challenges ahead of us and i don't know if customers know uh, if if listeners know but video and live stream specifically is the most expensive digital asset at this time. And it's nice to see 
social media having it all for free for for everybody uh but actually uh it's super costly technology hopefully getting cheaper and cheaper um in the future Cool. Interesting to know it's one of the most difficult things to actually produce because I think all of us kind of forget there is a cost. Every time we Google for something or we scroll on Facebook or, or Instagram or wherever, there is cost associated with that. So it's always good, good to be reminded, especially for those of you who are working on um, the sustainability. But let's not even go get into that and the, uh, the what, what type of energy is powering what we're doing. But the bit, I love the fact you've outlined those three areas, Robert, but what I think we should focus in on is the middle one, the one to many, because I think that's, to my mind, that's the one that has the hugest power for for really revolutionising somebody's sales. And for those of you who are kind of going, what is this like? Well, I think it, in the kind of the traditional retail world, it's a bit like running a very short term pop up, like a 60 minute or a 90 second pop up where customers can come in and talk to you. And in the online world, it's a bit like running a Facebook Live, but you're doing it on your website or even a bit like running a TV shopping channel of your own that only goes live for 30 minutes a week. That's what I think we should, we should really talk about is how we can, can, uh, can do that one of the retailer to the many of the customers. So nuts and bolts, I just started talking about time spans. How long should these be, Robert? Should they be, you know... 30 minutes long, 90 minutes long? Is it five minutes? Is it however long the audience want to stick around for? It depends on the business and the story you want to tell. Sometimes we even see e-commerce sites going live with a DJ set for, for two hours. <laughs> so they don't even describe their products. They don't even tell the story of, of their business. And they are actually able to generate the revenue worth of a month of their revenue just in two hours. Uh, we ask ourselves why. It's still super early for us. And we, we interview all of the customers of ours and customers of their and, and, and trying to figure out why is that happening. And I think it's about getting closer to the offline experience. When you go to the uh, brick and mortar, there's probably music playing, right? That is giving you different feeling, different emotion. And and when you see faces behind the businesses and you don't see just static pages with 14 pages of items and you don't know how to decide what to buy, uh, there can be even retail trader airing live from nine to five. And anytime somebody will visit the site, that retailer can just be there for them and ask them like, if you want to help with your buying decisions, I'm here for you and I can show you the products. We can apply the same principles of one-to-one to one-to-many -one -one um, conversations with your customers. Back to your question, um, I think 15 minutes is the minimum to tell a story, but you can even have, I don't know, Drake going to Gucci.com to buy new clothes and he can air it just for five minutes to his fans. And that's all possible with live commerce. And I guess the other side of of how long, and yeah, I totally get if we're trying to, if we're, we're featuring an influencer who's shopping our site, probably going to be quite short. If we're trying to explain a whole catalogue range, it might, or do a DJ set, it might be a lot longer. The other side of it, I guess, is frequency. You know, should we be doing this every single day or do we do it every Friday at two? It, can we think of it like a show or is it just something I think you, you said earlier about uh, retailers doing this to clear out some stock. So is it something we just do when we need to, you know, when the sale launches or when we're running a particular promotion? This can be applied to all of those use cases you just mentioned. Uh, we are super interested in seeing the Black Friday commercials mm -hmm. uh, airing on, on using live commerce on, on business sites. And it also depends on the, on the size of the business and how big catalog of items you have. If you are a small brand, you probably just want to go to Craftsman and show the story behind how the product was built. Um, when you're dropping a new collection, that's probably a time when you want to maybe invite an artist that was shot with those clothes and do video with uh, with that artist. Um, and then if you have a full stock, you will probably 
to repeat that once a week. Um, I think every business needs to find the right frequency. But I also see larger businesses airing live on their website even a few times per day. So just imagine it like a TV program that you can have on your website. Um, and each show will be for different segment uh, of your of your customers. So let's say that you have electronic e-commerce site. Let's say that every single workday at 10 a.m. you can stream with an expert about e-gaming and everything new around e-gaming and why you should buy this CPU um, and not the other one. Or there is a new graphic chip. And you can even repeat the, these shows again and again each day at 10 with the grocery delivery sites that we see popping up these days. You can have dietologists talking to different group audiences each time. So I don't know, every every workday again at 5 p.m., one dietologist will be explaining or giving advices to pregnant women uh, how they should eat. Um, I think People will start experimenting with, with live commerce once they will understand more how their customers approach their websites and when they have a need to be educated about their products. So it strikes me that there's kind of two types. There's obviously a lot of experimentation to be done, which is totally understandable because this is such a new field. But it strikes me there's kind of like two key types of one-to-many broadcast. One is kind of the the discount broadcast mm-hmm. where we've gone oh no we've got a hundred too many of this telly uh, yeah <laughs> or this television I should say how let's let's just we're gonna do an event and we're gonna flog them off you know like, like that kind of bl- that Black Friday type of thing exactly. um, and then the other one is more the the knowledge and relationship building which could stray into customer service or could stray into you know, here's our new range. Let's put it on some models and show you what it looks like. Let's get the stylist in. Let's get the dietitian in. So it's kind of you're coming for the content, but it's less of a buy, buy, buy message. It strikes me those are the two kind of core pillars we're talking about here. Yeah, we can agree on that. And, <laughs> for now. <laughs> for now. But at the same time, you can run a website where you sell services. You can have a yoga classes and you can go live for first 15 minutes to bring new customers and and give them a sneak peek of uh, how that class looks like before they will convert. So you don't have to sell necessarily the physical or, or digital products. It strikes me some people may be, you know, the more the more tech savvy of our listeners may be, may be listening and going, well, why can't I can just do that right now with a Facebook Live? But what we're talking about is doing this on your own website, isn't it? Because it's great to do a Facebook Live, but just imagine how much more powerful that would be if the video is there on the website and as someone browses around your website and actually looks and shops at the products, that video is still playing. That's what we're talking about, isn't it, Robert? Yes. So there are a couple of businesses doing live commerce in a way that they created their own platforms where both streamers and customers need to sign up and usually download their own apps. And we've been there with the video platform that we built and pivoted from a year ago. And we don't think this is the right approach. We don't even think like Facebook Live is a is, is the right approach because when you are trying to sell something during the Facebook Live, you still need to provide the link to your website or product page where the sale will occur. In this case, your entire marketing campaign for that show will drive people in to your business where you own your own data for a show, for sales, for conversion, for everything. And with Curcuma, we have two modes how you can engage with that content. So you can put it in full screen when you want to focus specifically on the streamer and the product being presented, or you can keep it picture in picture. And at that point, you can drag and drop it wherever you want. So maybe it can be hiding the basket and you want to see your shopping basket. So you'll just drag and drop it to to another corner. And at that time, you can just browse the, the, the product page, read the description, reviews, 
and other stuff. And at the same time, you can even go to another product pages and, and, and even decide to buy more. Um, and in terms of the interaction with the streamer and the moderators, you can chat with them in real time. And you can also like the, um, the presentation, the show itself at any time, because there is a heart icon that people are familiar from all social media. And you can even share it with your with your friends on other social media. So you can help with promoting that um, show even before it starts because there's RSVP function going live. So, so I'm really glad you mentioned the before it even goes live side of this because I'm, I'm assuming, because certainly when, if I do a live stream or a webinar, I spend a lot of time and effort promoting it to people and telling people it's happening before it happens. They know it's going to happen and therefore they can come and join it and sign up for it. Do we need to do the same thing with a live stream commerce one to many event? Do we need to tell people in advance that on Tuesday at two, we will be talking about our staplers um, or something, you know, is it, is it an essential to do that? It is highly recommended because it all depends on the traffic you have on your website. There are cases when the live stream can pop up on you once you will visit the site and you can see upcoming events going live. But if the live stream will be just for 15 minutes, then there are many times you you just need to promote the, the live stream. So we split the, the entire process into three phases. There is pre-live stream phase when you are doing exactly what you do with your podcasts. You are drawing people in to that URL. Want to let every listener to know that it's your URL. It's your e-commerce website with our suffix at the end that is just initiating the, the live stream. And when the live stream is not happening, they see a model window with a description of the event, with a countdown, with RSVP feature. So you can generate leads using this uh, live event and we'll ultimately send them invitation. And then those customers of yours can share the URL with their friends as well in order to promote that event for you. So that's the, the time before the event will start. Then there is uh, the event itself. And after the event, we also plan to use your contacts and send them the email to review or rate the, the event itself. And we can even bring their, the products you've been selling and, and, and let them know that there is still discount and you can still come and, and buy it for cheap. Excellent. So we kind of, we have that pre-stage, get people interested and signed up, post, uh, during stage where they actually watch it and it all happens. And then afterwards, we must make sure we send them the message afterwards to say, rate the video and here's what we were talking about, like that follow up message. And do we, do you make um, replays available? And can these become like an archive of videos that anyone can go through, whether they sign up or not? So we actually today have only live commerce. So you have to go live. But in a week from now, where I think it's already there, I'm not sure. I have to check out with, with my team. <laughs> but we are launching pre-recorded function. So if you're not ready to go live, it's super challenging for you. You can prepare the video and air it as live at the moment when when you are ready. And we will also do replays as well. So now we we record all of the sessions, but we don't display them to, to our customers. We are planning to introduce that feature in upcoming weeks as well. So you guys, this is so hot off the press. <laughs> Everything is still still up, up for grabs. There's another good reason to get into doing this early on is because you can learn very quickly, but you can also have influence in what happens next. Well, look, I think we've covered all the key points there. Uh, Robert, before we go, go into the... Um, into the insider tips section. Is there anything I really should have asked you about that we should quickly cover off? Or have we covered the key factors for successful live stream commerce? I think we've covered everything. And as you mentioned, the entire market is super early. And that also means that we, we just launched our beta two months ago. And we advise all of the businesses to try it out. And because we are flexible at the same time. And, and, and we can do this with the businesses, right? Um, it's our job to help businesses drive and, and grow their sales 
And at the same time, something that we haven't mentioned, reduce returns. That's very important aspect of, of like live commerce and a huge advantage by showing products in real time to your customers, they can make better buying decision and uh, you'll not let them return the products because they will know what they buy. Of course, I guess, you know, if you were going for something really boring, like a, a no, actually, I find notepads quite interesting. So not really boring, but we'll go with notepads. You know, the number of times I buy a notepad wondering, is it plain or is it lined or is it dots on the inside? But if you're on a live stream, is the consumer, you go, what's that one look like on the inside? They show you correct buying decision made. It's as simple as that. Okay, cool. I'm glad you brought that up as well. Well, look, Robert, we are going to pause now for a mind of our sponsors, and then we're going to talk about the wider world. Well, we're going to talk a bit more even about live stream commerce. Success in 2021 means building stronger relationships with your customers. Last year saw a lot of consumers switching to buy online, leading to surges in new customer acquisition. So how are you planning on turning your new first-time buyers into profitable repeat customers? Well, that's what Clavio is for. Clavio helps businesses create memorable marketing moments through email, SMS and personalised website experiences. And that is what creates repeat purchases. That's why Clavio, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform, platform is used by over 50,000 e-commerce brands around the world. Get started with your free account today. Visit klaviyo.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. Okay, Robert, so far we've gone deep into live stream commerce. You're now going to take us even deeper into live stream commerce and help us sum up a little bit by going through our insider tips. So are you ready for these? Yes, I do. Okay, let's start with newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to take their first step with live stream e-commerce, what do they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? I believe they need to know that the more authentic the live stream is, the more successful they are going to be. And that's something that many businesses underestimate because once I'm the owner of the e-commerce site and I love the design and the experience and the UI. I would love to have the best quality live stream with the entire production studio and a lot of people hired for just doing this. And it's absolutely not necessary. You can use your own phone as the business owner and you can tell the story to your fans in an authentic way and it'll work much better than just having a studio and spend a lot of time and investment into this. It's not necessary at all. It's perfectly okay to be running around the warehouse with your phone in your hand going, hold on, let me go and check and finding the products in the boxes to show people because it, it brings that authenticity to it. I love, I love that because I find often with these things, we all, I know I, I did when I started, started podcasting, got totally obsessed with getting the right tech, whereas actually the content and the authenticity is far more powerful than which microphone you choose or which camera you're using. Okay. Uh, once you've started, of course, you've got to keep optimizing. So I know it's early days, but what's your favorite way to improve live stream e-commerce once it's up and running? As we record every session, we give you advanced analytics. So you see when, depending on what you said, what you've shown, how you performed, people have been adding products to the cards. Wow. And, and by that, you, you can actually see what works for your customers and what not. Uh, so that's the first thing. The other thing is just to look at your Google Analytics and all the analytics you use and check your web traffic and see when usually your customers are ready to buy something. What's the best time? Is it the, before the lunch uh, every workday? Is it at 5 p.m. after work? Uh, I think all of these aspects are, are very important um, because people just coming back from work um, by a subway, let's say, they will probably not be ready to, to engage with you and turn the, the sound on. But if they are at home, ready to engage with the content, they are far more ready to, to, to buy products you present. So it's always good to, to analyze data about the event itself and about your customers. 
I, I love that. I, I love the fact we can work out that, you know, when we were running, is that when people added things to the car or was it when we were talking or was it loving that? Um, I could get very obsessed with those stats. If someone <laughs> listening, though, wants to learn more about live stream e-commerce, is there a cheap or free resource you would recommend? I think it's all um, on its way. And, and we, as I mentioned, we started off just two months ago. Now we have a, our own blog. So if you can go to curcuma.com blog and see we have around 12 articles so far that educate the entire market about what live commerce is, how you can start, how easy it is to start. Um, and there are not that many resources around us that you can use. Hopefully there will be. And I'm trying to get in contact with our competitors even to, to start sharing the knowledge we have uh, to build the we want to build our own academy or u university to, to educate businesses um, and marketers. But I think we shouldn't be the only ones. So I want to incentivize the CEOs of the other companies building live commerce solutions to not only focus on the enterprises and so upsell their, their services by providing that info. But we, we all should, should educate the market because it's very important. And, and this is going to be necessity for every commerce in the next few years. Uh, I love that. So watch this space, people. There's going to be more info coming, but right now heading to the to uh, Robert's blog, which we'll put the link to in the show notes for you, is a great place to go to get the, the latest info. And I will just say before I, I come back to you, Robert, that it is very hard to find good quality content out there about live stream e-commerce at the moment, because doing my research for this interview, I pretty much failed to find any anywhere. So that is a top tip. Um, Robert, back to you. Yeah, and I also just want to say that we have a team that is ready to help you out as well. So you can at any time book a demo with us and, and we can answer you all the questions you have. We can even go live for you. We have a team for that as well. Wow. So if you're not ready to, to start selling your products or tell a story, um, we can do it for you. Okay, so for the camera shy, there's your there's no excuse. Um, right, finally, it's crystal ball time. Just a properly tricky question for you, this one, Robert. Uh, what's coming up in the next six to twelve months that we should be getting ready for in live stream e-commerce? That's a very interesting question. I've been thinking about this a lot, and um, I think you should be expecting more and more companies um, jumping into it. As I said, our competitors target mostly enterprises and big big fashion brands that are experimenting with this. Uh, hopefully you will see more small and medium-sized brands um, experimenting with this. And what we are trying to achieve um, in upcoming months is to get ready businesses for Black Friday, for Christmas time, for Valentine days. Because actually you just have to prepare yourself for, for live commerce. And it's, you can get competitive advantage by doing that and it needs time so if you'll start off in september you'll do your first stream a month from the, uh, there you'll do another one and and you'll slowly adopt this new technology and by the christmas time you'll be ready for a proper marketing campaign that will help you succeed even more Excellent, excellent advice. And um, I am, I'm so looking forward to seeing more businesses using this because I think there's, there's huge potential. And it's one of those areas where I think startups and smaller businesses are so much better place to take advantage of it quickly than larger businesses. Because there's just not that red tape of who's going to do it? What are they going to say? Yeah. When are we going to, you know, you can imagine the, the oh, anyway, <laughs> painful process of making it happen in a big business. Well, look, um, look, Robert, we are pretty much at the end of the show. So can you please let everybody know where they can find you and your business on the web and social media, please? We are on most of the social media. We are on Twitter as Curcuma Official. We are at Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and we are planning to go live on TikTok as well. Lastly, you can check out our website, curcuma.com. 
Okay, and for everyone listening, we are spelling Korkuma, K-O-R-K-U-M-A. So all the K's in there, K-O-R-K-U-M-A. And we'll put um, links to all of those on the show notes. Robert, thank you so much for being here. It's been very cool shining a light on a on a new, truly new, truly exciting and potentially highly lucrative e-commerce marketing method. So thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. It was fun. So if you've ever felt frustrated that you can't create a kind of a conversational event on your website about your product to get customers to buy or, you know, to do one of those those kind of salesman pop-ups or to be on, to do your equivalent of a QVC session, you know, a TV shopping session, live stream commerce is the way to do it. And Robert's software platform enables you to do the whole thing on your website. It's got to be well worth the test, if, especially if you've got someone in your business who likes talking about the products and likes talking to customers. I can see this being hugely powerful, hugely, hugely powerful for businesses as a way of having those conversations that help the customer, that build a relationship with the customer, show the authenticity, and of course, drive the sales too. You can get links to everything we've just been discussing, plus the full transcript of the episode, important notes, and more at keepoptimizing.com. Thank you very much for tuning in to this episode of the Keep Optimizing podcast. I hope we've inspired a few of you to give this a go. And please do spread the word and tell your fellow marketers about this, this episode and the show in general, because we pull it all together to help as many of you as possible to improve the performance of your marketing. For now, though, have a great week and make sure you listen to the next episode so I can help you to keep optimizing your marketing. Access everything Keep Optimizing at keepoptimizing.com. That's with an S, not a Z.